Uh, my name is Georgia Griva. I'm project manager in uh, ESNGO, and uh, organization is ESNGO. So I'm Lucia Haidemanaki. Um, I am currently the coordinator of the Youth Center in ESNGO. It's a relatively new department and it concerns social activities, inclusion activities and youth work in general. Okay, uh, ESCs has uh, started in 2005 uh, with a boarding house uh, uh, for mental health uh, users. I think the need uh, identifies itself at first. So it is uh, totally based in the societal needs uh, that are uh, that are every time emerging depending on the situational, political, social uh, circumstances that are uh, surrounding us. So as a social organization, uh, the needs are identified by the society in this sense. My uh, professional perspective in the field is that uh, in general the protocol that is uh, and the methodology that is applied in the work with the refugees uh, is based uh, um, in a bottom-up process in a sense that, uh, that uh, there is the, um, the field of experts and the field of uh, the research field, the educational field that are already aware and they already know the needs and the, uh, what, what, the refugee, uh, what the refugees need. So, uh, so it is almost assuming what the refugee needs before uh, really getting to know deeply what they have to share with us. So basically this is a methodology and um, it is more based on an expert and um, refugee, more vulnerable um, person, let's say. Uh, the challenges uh, mostly are related with uh, um, the approach that is currently implemented and also with the profile of the people that are addressing the services. Uh, so it is um, both side uh, challenges, let's say. Uh, there is the intercultural aspect that uh, the, the lack of communicational skills, uh, the lack of sometimes of, um, of adequate uh, interpretations and not interpretations, the uh, Amosolavice. The lack of mediation sometimes. Um, there, is, there are some uh, very strong needs uh, from the refugee uh, <laughs> that the services are not, uh, um, let's say, adequate enough to deal with because it's a massive, massive uh, uh, wave of uh, people that are moving so currently. And it's really hard to, uh, to fill the gap in reality. My, uh, also my view is that uh, it's really essential that they capture competencies from both sides. I mean, even the refugees that they are coming here, they are not quietly know where they are coming. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the people that they are working with them, they don't have the intercultural competencies mm -hmm. in order to, to, to cooperate with them, deal with them, understand their needs, their, um, uh, understand what they need and how they need it. It's so difficult to evaluate your work and to make an assessment about the work. I mean, uh, it's totally different the needs that you're in. in a camp, you only need to give them food, clothes, the basic needs. If you're speaking about a hosting unit for families, we're speaking about totally different things, about education, about work, about uh, uh, people integration. So uh, it depends about the occasions and, this, and the cases that they are working with, we're working with. To, to, Im to include, to work with a um, dialogue methodology, how to say, with the people, uh, an honest uh, stance from the people that are thing to be the experts and from the people that are thought to be the more vulnerable one to try to exchange what we think and this is also part of the youth center that we do we he, we have here some uh, uh, volunteers European volunteers and we're trying to in, to make inclusive projects with the refugees from the several uh, units of ESIS so we are asking them to teach us let's say what 
from simple activities such as what, uh, what games do they use to play in their uh, home countries, to teach us back, to teach us how they live, how they, uh, how they are um, thinking. So we're trying to, 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 to make this distance, this gap that is there because of the methodology basically, we're trying to make it smaller if possible. There's not in their intention to stay here, so they don't have the motivation to integrate themselves, to learn the language, to, to go out to see where they are or to try to find a way to, to, um, to set up their lives here. So they are always in their minds, I'm not going to stay in Greece, I'm going to leave, I want to go to my cousin in Germany. So actually, it makes really, really difficult the work of the people working with them because even though they want to make integration project, they cannot success. They are not going to be success. The needs are different. The needs are different. I mean, so and also if we consider also the crisis that we are in Greece and uh, how easy all these people even to integrate. I mean, the first form of integration is work. Where are these people are going to find work? I mean, even the Greeks are facing problems to find work. So, and also the status, I mean, you can only find illegal jobs. You cannot find a, a legal job with, uh, uh, with social service, etc. So, all these matters is make all the situation really, really problematic and in risk, in risk for both sides. Um, tools, um, I think all art and forms of art uh, are mostly working, uh, not even working. They're even um, they're even necessary uh, in the intercultural dialogue and anyway in, in societal crisis. I think uh, ways of of sharing uh, cultural uh, uh, experiences, cultural traditions, art art is included in that. Sometimes games, um, theater. Uh, dance, music, these, these ways are very, very, very effective tools, if we could name them as tools in the societal work, in the social work, sorry. So um, we're, we're trying to implement all this creative, um, to implement a creative approach when working with people. Um, mm -hmm. It is um, almost self-healing, I think, just art or traditions or culture, if we could use these tools, it's a way to bring people together and to connect people and to reduce this huge uh, gap or stereotype gap, basically the gaps that are a result of the stereotypes of the people. We are having this cultural night and every Thursday, let's say, is a cultural night, uh, Spanish one, German one, there is the Iranian one. So we're open to suggestions from the people, the asylum seekers that are living in the units of ESS, let's say, to propose to us and to organize themselves the, their cultural night where they can share all, the, uh, all their traditions, whatever they want, to, with the Greeks and with the Spanish, with the Germans. So the interculturality is the, the key element in that. Art can be used as a tool. <laughs> uh, to challenge um, the negative perception maybe of the people, for example, in Greece. Um, I would just love to give an example. Um, the image of a, of a woman refugee uh, with a hijab uh, is kind of, it's very strange. Uh, so so uh, art projects like uh, painting or uh, theater or uh, even even handcrafts uh, photography uh, brings people and challenges their perception of what is that and there is beauty in that there's very much beauty in that so it just helps people to uh, to uh, evaluate again and challenge what they were thinking before how the meaning of that it's not uh, it's not necessarily hitting their face, it may be so much, it has a value there. So it, it is helping reevaluate the, the, how to say, uh, the system, the belief system of the people. And it's so important. And art can use that, can do that uh, as a tool 
with no um, complex uh, words or really eclectic ones, or it is very direct, direct in doing that.